morning super truckers story of the week so about two weeks ago no not two weeks ago about four weeks ago this guy came up uh, he called Christian and uh, started the process of signing up to a company so what happened he had some major financial challenges uh, apparently he was not making the money at the company he was at uh, he was still trying to do semi like local stuff but it just didn't work out it just didn't work out so he calls Christian and uh, we talk Christian invites him into the office as we many times do because we don't want the wrong people coming aboard because we we just gonna we just gonna cause a lot of expenses um, and there is gonna be no no good ending. I mean, if we're not ready to to take their own business in their own hands and actually do something about it, it's just not gonna work. It's, it's just gonna be another sad story. So he invites this guy. We talk. The guy has issues. Uh, seems like he cannot hit, get his stuff together. Uh, we talk. The agreement is all right. Look, uh, everything doesn't look exactly, you know, exactly very good. And uh, let's do this. We do the application. We do the background, and then we'll we'll make a decision. So, the guy applies, we do the background, verification, all this good stuff, uh, and we have this conversation with Christian, what we're going to do about this guy. Uh, apparently, you know, Michael gets involved, uh, we had this other conversation with this guy uh, on how we operate, how we run, no sugar coating, and uh, pretty much the guy before he goes in, he was very clearly asked the question, are you coming to work or you just, uh, you still don't get what is the problem, why you have no money, why you have no success? Apparently the guy says, you know what, I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel, let's do this. Alright, so we have a meeting. And I'm pushing against it somewhat. I mean, I'm always, I'm always happy to see people come on board. But with this specific guy, I was quite pessimistic. I, I really thought that it's not gonna last. I thought that it's just some talking points. But he responded pretty good to, you know, to Christians giving information. Uh, and he was just given, uh, you know, the reality check by Michael. So he knew it all, and uh, he decided to come on on board. So the first week, whatever, whatever the case was, I think he only left on like Tuesday or Wednesday, and he was back by Friday. So he literally just left Florida and came back. When he started, like, based on the fuel report, I can tell you right away, he started with empty fuel tanks, came back home with full fuel tanks. So, which means that whatever he made of these two short runs coming out of Florida, probably to Georgia or something, and going back in, on top of that, you know, obviously he got the, he took the company's bobtail insurance policy, which every owner, every self-respecting owner operator should have, because that's your thing. You need to be protected because if you're gonna just like this guy later on quits the company in two weeks, and now he goes out somewhere to sign up with some other company. That trip is on you. So if anything happens between when you leave our yard 
until you make it to the next company, until you get that new insurance policy in place, you're not covered. You're risking everything, including jail time. So, but again, you know, like, who am I? I'm not making laws. I'm not, I'm not a cop. It's up to people to do whatever we want to do. And uh, so he comes back, seems very needy of the money. So again, the proof doesn't have his stuff together, doesn't have enough money to run his business. And again, it's not my business, it's his business. Uh, and he has to have, he has to be responsible for it. So, uh, we have a couple of different, you know, payment options. So, like, right away he calls in and he says, you know, I, I, I want the wire transfer uh, for this payroll because we usually do the, the ACH, which takes two business days. Uh, but we also have a wire transfer option. Uh, as long as you pay all your, you know, bank fees, whatever we are, I think like 25 bucks, uh, you can hit, have it right there on Friday. So he calls in, <laughs> he calls in Christian, uh, then uh, Christian calls accounting, and accounting says like, hey, look, you know, the the plates, the insurance, the 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 fuel uh, is like at $63 he only did one load out of Florida one load back in came out empty tanks came back full tanks uh, now he's home I don't know it's $63 if we're gonna do a wire transfer our bank is gonna charge 25 bucks so that's gonna be on him so 63 minus 25 that's uh, that's total enough enough. That's like 25 and 13, uh, 38. So that's 38 dollars. His bank most likely gonna charge anywhere between like 20 and 30 dollars for the incoming wire. I mean, what's he's gonna get? Five dollars. So you know, he he gets that information. He apparently understands. It's all right. You know, I get it. Uh, I just needed to, you know, do some testing on my truck, so here we go, you know, I, I, I'm gonna pay the price. All right. So, the next thing, the next week comes by. Uh, a little hesitant to come come out on Monday, but I guess uh, Michael made that happen. Then uh, runs a pretty decent week. So, because he's a new guy, and because he has all those, you know, the plate fees until until it's paid, uh, some other stuff. You know. Oh, the the escrow, which is a thousand dollars, and again that's in hundred dollars increments until it's a thousand dollars, unless you you leave uh, you you leave early. So, unless you leave early uh, and uh, without, you know, paying it out, we have to have that thousand dollars because if some claim comes back or something, we have to have enough money to pay for it, uh, which is insurance deductible pretty much uh, at that point or to cover anything else that comes in later. Uh, and if nothing comes back 45 days later, on average, boom get it back no problem so this guy runs a week and after all those expenses you know like the, all those things that we have to collect especially we pretty big at the beginning uh, he comes back home and leaves the, decides to leave the company so now it's a first week that he does all right because if it uh, if it wasn't for his uh, plates and uh, escrow he would be like probably at around two thousand dollars 
and don't forget that's that's southeast regional uh, so he got pushed he allowed us to push it and he was pretty much making it but now the guy wants mama's tip he just cannot do this it's just too tough for him he wants to be home every day now which don't forget this is exactly where he's coming from this is exactly what got him to this situation and by the way the guy came from flatbeds into the dry vans because that's all we do dry vans keeping it simple i'll do another video on how um, how you don't make more money with flatbed or reefer or none of that you you'll make a little bit more money but you have a little bit more expenses and at the end of the year you're in the same boat the only difference is you can do it easy or you can do it hard up to you so now this guy is not sure if this is for him and his buddy called and now he's gonna go try to do those flatbeds all right so that first week when you made a little bit of money you're gonna kill it all because we have to cover the cost of place that are non-refundable non-refundable not just by us to you but by the state to us and we got those plates for you if you're jumping the companies left and right do yourself a favor man get your own plates because i seen some people literally like some normal people out here listening to this are not even going to believe this is happening i've seen drivers switching 20 companies a year and we don't have their own plates do you know how much money you just lost that year you just literally wasted like 35 to 40 thousand dollars what do you expect to make and by switching that many companies how many weeks did you work you must be broke as you broke can get man. that's that's how bad it is so all right uh, and then Michael goes out and he's like uh, well the guys actually came in to, to to switch the trailers but then he starts talking to Michael and like all this I'm not sure I'm gonna go to work for my buddy he has this flatbed and da 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 and Michael just tells him straight up I listen you know you're not sure why 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 hook up to the trailer if you're not sure we're not sure so how about let's just cut it and call it the day because it's just not gonna end good you don't have the determination you don't have the endurance and how in the hell you got a hold of that truck is gonna be a mystery for years to come Whew. so and again some of you amazing professionals of the industry you probably have no idea what's going on when I was one of you I had no idea when I drove a truck when I was an owner operator for a living for years, I had no idea. Uh, I I was always surprised why all these businesses uh, so freaky about allowing trucks to come and sleep on their empty property overnight when it's empty anyway. Now we know because there is going to be a piss bottles, there is going to be shit all over the place. Uh, garbage you name it it's gonna be there and how do i know because now i run the yard of uh, 90 or around 90 trucks parks there independent owner operators and small companies that's 
that's who are my customers so now I know I was oh my god I thought I thought it's it's easy everybody is just like me I'm not throwing trash all around I'm not pissing all over the place I'm not throwing the piss bottles uh, all over I'm uh, I'm just you know a decent person in a truck and doing my job and being aware of other things uh, you know not just not being a pig so but hey wake up wake up the reality is different so if you judge everything that you see by your own actions man the reality is very very different uh, so that's it I, I really want to know what you guys think about the guy like this I really want to know what you think uh, because I don't know we like we have about 30 plus trucks hardcore professionals doing what we're supposed to do making a living out of trucking doing good some of them buy new trucks and they able to make payments and do all this other good stuff but we have work ethic we have what it takes to be successful we're not looking for a handout and then the other like five to ten spots inside the company that's a revolving door it's just the people like that that I just told you about and when we bring them in we don't sugarcoat we don't promise you the things that will not happen we tell you as it is don't believe it try it call Christian see what's up see what he's gonna tell you uh, just don't tell them don't tell him that you're calling you know uh, that you're calling uh, just to test test his uh, professionalism and uh, what he says uh, or that I send you to test him don't tell him that just talk to him and see what he says even if you don't even apply, plan to apply even if you are like based out of California which is just not gonna work out for us and for you just for a fun of it experience the different recruiting level experience the truth we even had the people who come into the company to meet the Christian we talk he puts everything on the table and uh, the guy says man thank you you're like the first person ever in this position telling me how it is but then again he walks out and goes to somebody else who had a little bit thicker sugar coating so all this thank you but no thank you I, I still want to live in the lava line that's what they want to do all right you do that but anyway I was talking to a friend of mine a couple months ago about our orientation process and I'm like man it's like two days and and again this I know this guy for years when he started trucking I was a known operator back then so he was my driver now he is a known operator and one truck company um, so he knows what's up he's a very decent person he's uh, taking care of his own business not looking for a handouts and he's on top of his stuff and when we were talking about our you know screening and training and orientations it's like man what are you doing there for like uh, two days seems a little bit too long and I'm like well yeah seems a little too long to me if you know if the driver is like you or like me it's it's freaking insane it's, it's it's really long because for some of you guys listening there who has been in business who know what's up two days god must be boring but you know why that is because of a guy i just told you about because this guy has been in business for probably like 10 years or so and nothing 
and he is still he is still doesn't know anything but if you ask him you know what he's gonna tell you he's gonna tell you that he knows everything he's been everywhere he's the hardcore owner operator who knows everything he can tell you how to run the business well I'm not gonna brag about it but after 10 years in business I was in a lot of a better place than he was that he will probably ever be because he's just blind and deaf he cannot see or hear and there's gonna be no light until that changes so anyway let me know what you guys think post in the comments like share and uh, if you like this kind of videos I drive to work every day for about an hour and you got all my time so peace out